Good afternoon, uh, everyone. So welcome to the eighth distinguished lecture of uh, Department of Computer Science and Nova Laboratory for Computer Science and Informatics at Nova. So we are very pleased to host today Hiroshi Ishii from uh, Media Lab. So this is, as I've just mentioned, a very special moment for our department and research unit. So, so this is a joint initiative of the department that you offer not just to the students, to our, our, our undergraduate students from our department, PhD students as well, and uh, overall for the students of the school, for colleagues from, the, from our, our, our faculty colleagues from our departments and from other departments in the school, as well as for other colleagues in the community, computer science community in Lisbon, and from companies, from uh, secondary schools, uh, and so on. So I'll just uh, end over. I wish you a very good uh, session today. So the lecture will, as usual, last for about one hour, followed by a, a short Q&A uh, period that you could benefit of. And I'll just end over to Teresa, just to make a personal presentation of Hiroshi talk. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, thank you for coming. I'm very, very happy to have uh, Professor Hiroshi Ishii here today for this distinguished lecture. Um, I've met him some years ago <laughs> uh, at AIDS conference here also in, in, in Lisbon when we invited him for also a keynote. Uh, he is a professor at uh, MIT Media Lab uh, since the 90s where he found the um, Tangible User Interface uh, group and um, he, he, before joining the MIT Media Lab, he was, uh, uh, he had the CSCW uh, group at uh, NTT Japan. And in this year, in 1919, he won the um, life, uh, SIGGRAPH Lifetime Research Award for his fundamental and influential research contributions to the field of human-computer interaction in the past quarter century. So uh, I welcome yeah. you, Professor, yeah. Professor Hirorishi Ishi, MIT. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure and also honor to coming back to Lisbon. It's the uh, first time for me to come to visit uh, Lisbon. But last time, uh, I was given the chance to give a keynote in the AAC conference. Uh, before I start my lecture, I really want to e express my sincere thanks to Computer Science Department of NOVA and also NOVA Laboratories for Computer Science and Informatics. And uh, also uh, friendship uh, with Professor Teresa Roman. She kindly uh, convinced me to come back to Lisbon and uh, she came to my talk in the Glasgow, which also really encouraged me uh, a lot to make today's lecture happen. So uh, I was very fortunate to re be recognized uh, in the uh, Kai communities after 30 years of kind of battles against mainstreams. So today, I'd like to condense my research in the past 30 years, uh, how to really make digital tangible. So I'd like to talk about the whole history. And if you're interested in, uh, I already have a full talk lecture videos in Glasgow online. If you search uh, Glasgow, you see, then you see these Vimeo uh, videos. Also in the Facebook, I uploaded all the slides or anything. So, so you, you're very welcome to share all those stuff. But first of all, I want to thank the uh, people in Nova University and Lisbon, but also the amazing students who worked with me in the past 25 years at MIT Media Lab, sharing the dream to make digital tangible, then develop a lot of the uh, prototypes, submitting a lot of papers, and many are rejected with so strange and crazy stuff. But always Kai community really encouraged me and helped me to continue the work. I met a lot of the pioneer, Bill Blackstone, Marie Mantais, and also after joining MIT, I could go to the conference with uh, students. So encouragement of the community is important, but also 
contributing to the community to introducing a new way of thinking is something uh, very, very valuable. We got a lot of the feedback, including a uh, rejection of the papers, critic, and uh, Ben Schneiderman is kind of godfather in the Kai community. He published a book about all the pioneers, but I know all these people who really gave very, very valuable comments and uh, feedback about my research. Also, especially, I really can't thank enough to the heroes I met. Uh, Douglas Engelbart is my real heroes. And uh, also Mark Weiser, I talk later, but the father of Epitas Computings and late Bill Mitchell, he was a dean of school activities and plannings. I learned so much from these pioneers, also Professor Mario Tokoro, Alan K, Nicolas Negoro Pontes. I'd like to talk about how those people really changed my life in the past 30 years. So first I'd like to talk about uh, before MIT, I was in NTT. Uh, seamless media design is my first chunk of the work in Japan. Then after moving to MIT, I started a tangible bits to make digital tangible. And recently, in the past 10 years, we are doing the work called Radical Atoms, how to make real physical materials computational and dynamic. So I'd like to condense all this stuff into this lecture. So when I was in NTT in the 90s, uh, they were very keen about the information superhighways, which called broadband ISDNs. The dreams of the multimedia broadband network changed the world. Unfortunately, BISDN never really come to realities. The internet completely depressed. However, at that time, we really thought needs of the value, needs of the application, service. So that we started uh, some project to address this issue. So this is a uh, team work sessions, uh, which we did in uh, the 1990s to integrate different uh, space, computer screen, and the real desktop video image of the uh, tabletop. So you can really fuse the interaction happening on the piece of papers using a hand gesture drawings and the computer screen. So you superimpose half transduce entry, your desktop and your computer, but also your partner, remote partners. So by doing a simple mechanism of a uh, video uh, overlays, you can really do uh, interesting uh, shared drawings, pointings using your hands and the pens, and also favorite computer tools. So next, next jump is uh, clear board to try to make a seamless design of different scene between talking heads and the shared drawing surface. When you use a, a Skype and also Google Doc, these are two separate words. But the seeing each other's face, but also working together, is something very important. So to remove the seam between interpersonal space and the shared workspace, we designed the clear board one and also clear board two. It's starting very simple idea of a, a mock-up. You can see this uh, first mock-up called Clearable Zero. Simple glass ball through which you can see each other as the talking. So using this as a starting point, we created the, uh, we created the versions which allows people to do the uh, remote collaborations. So first one is a, first one is a, a Mock-up, so testing the basic idea with mock-up, communicating other people is something important. This is a fast pro a project for remote collaboration using uh, videos. So now you can see that uh, two people, me and also my colleague, Minoru Kobayashi, is actually talking through and also drawing through this uh, clear board. And also we made a computer-based versions. So this uh, project was inspired by many, many uh, uh, prior work, including uh, video draw, also collab meeting room done by Xerox Park team, and also Douglas Engelbart, a uh, famous NLS video. So 1994, uh, I, had, uh, I was invited by Alan K and uh, to the meetings uh, in uh, Atlanta to talk about the uh, technology of CSCW, Computer Supported Cooperative Work. So we, we presented the uh, work about the career board. In that meetings, uh, Alan K and Nicholas were the board members, and they approached me after my lectures, asking me to come to MIT. So I was actually headhunted in 1994. Then that the reasons I, I made a change in 1995, moving from uh, uh, NTT to MIT. But one of the conditions of the hiring by Nicholas was don't continue any work I've done before, like a CSCW, a clearable team relaxation. And he challenged me to start something radically new. 
So he said, life is short. It's a really great pleasure to make a challenge. It's a bit uh, crazy advice for non-tenured professor. So basically, he asked me to reboot, and actually, I did it. So I moved from NTT to MIT Media, and uh, this is the first building uh, designed by IMPay. Now we are working in the new building uh, designed by uh, Fumihiko Amaki. And in that laboratories, I have to really find a new direction, new strategy of research. So doing something radically new requires very careful thinking about uh, how to make work, not incrementals. So mainstream of graphical user interface at that time, also today, is intangible, visual, remote control, single user, general purpose. That is a fundamental uh, principle. So 25 years ago, I started thinking about what is the orthogonal opposite vectors, tangible, direct manipulation, multi-user, special purpose. Then I tried to shed the light, uh, searchlight to the night sky, waiting for something appears, like uh, this uh, blimp. So it turned out to be the, uh, tangible. So that is a strategic way to really find the new direction, new space. That was 1995. Then I decided to make a group to make digital tangible. This is very simple missions. In a more longer statement, we want to invent new tangible and embodied interaction that inspire and also engage uh, people. So inspire and engage is something very important part. So these are like early uh, photos of my team. And you can see I have a computers uh, on my, uh, in my hands. That is Abacus. How many people can compute with Abacus in this audience? Not so many. And actually, Abacus is one of the very simple, transparent uh, computational devices, which represent all the digits as the beats. So you can directly touch every beat. So this is one of the examples of tangible bits. But also transparency. Because if you grab abacus, shake it, become musical instruments, then on the table, that's become a toy train, and also you can scratch your back. <laughs> Without reading manual written by Google or Apple people, because it's called affordance, if you see simple structure of the abacus, there's no silicon, bo silicon black box. You can easily decode input, output, memory, and the inference. That simplicity and transparency is missing completely in current digital world. Everything is black box. So I try to bring back some kind of transparency and uh, simplicity. So this is a phrase I wrote uh, 25 years ago. And basically, we are at a seizure be between bits and atoms. Then we are struggling, in some sense, reconciling our dual citizenship in the physical world and the digital world. Because to, to a these two are completely different world. And all the information in the cyberspace, but fundamentally, we are trapped in the physical world. So our visual and the auditory sense organs are steeped in the sea of the digital information, but our body remain in the physical world. And the windows of the digital world are confined to the flat square screen filled with the pixels or painted bits. So painted bits is a fundamental representation, but intangible. So how to really change this uh, uh, equation was my motivation uh, in a quarter century ago. Professor Malcolm Mucker wrote a very influential book called Abstracting Craft, uh, in which he made a nice important phrase, eyes are in charge, but hands are underemployed. Means you are using your eyes very efficiently, absorb information, possibly, as the photons you receive on retinas. But if you're creators or designer, you have to use your body, hands, uh, to form the shape, the clay, or a musician play piano, if you're a choreographer, you have to dance using a body. So how to really change the equations between eyes and hands, another important interest that we've been working on that. So oral is one of the, my favorite uh, instruments to represent knowledge of solar system. How to represent the ideas are the key questions. So this oral has a very important uh, interface with people. That is a handle. So this handle is grabbed by the people. And uh, then, if you rotate this uh, oral system, your body is part of the solar systems. You, no ambiguities about the causality chain. You move, your muscle and nervous system scream. Then all the planets start rotating around the sun. Then eclipse appears and the four seasons appears. So this engagement, this coupling is missing in kind of digital world. Also, this is a real 3D, not a fake 3D on the 2D screen. So you can really see where your uh, colleagues are looking at, 
what's a point that the uh, uh, Focalites advisors are pointing at. So this rich 3D space is very, very difficult in current uh, uh, GUI uh, scheme. So three things I care, tangible and aesthetics and interactive. So I think to inspire people, aesthetics is very, very important. And also to engage in interactions is important, as you saw in the orari of the handle. So 1997, I wrote a first paper called Tangibits to raise a grant of a Tangibits uh, framework. And, uh, but uh, it's a very controversial paper because I propose something radically uh, different, which it's very difficult to, to let people agree. And the paper was almost rejected because of uh, disagreement. But uh, my friend, Dr. Mark Weiser, was one of the uh, referees, also Jim Horan from UCSD. Those people rescued my paper from rejections. And uh, so that's really important. But uh, later, I got something uh, quite amazing uh, email from Mark Weiser. This became my treasure as a professional researcher. Uh, Hiroshi and the Brick. Brick was closer, my first students. Uh, I recently had a chance to read your Kite 97 paper. It's a great paper, Tangibits. It's a uh, uh, work characterized the technological landscape in the 21st century. That's nice. I do have a request. My request is that you help me stop the spread of misunderstanding of Ipsos computing because simply of its name. So he was he really worried about uh, misuse or kind of abuse of his UBComp uh, vision. The last sentence was something very, very striking. Tangibits is very nice and maybe could serve as an overall umbrella. But then you might lose it as a name of your research project. I thought my stuff is very different from uh, UBComp. But he said, fundamentally, in a deep web, UBComp and Tangibits share something very important common value. Even he suggested to let use together. That's something the most uh, encouraging uh, uh, comments I got in my professional career. And of course, there's so many uh, great uh, prior work uh, inspired me, including uh, Ibitas Computing, Mark Weiser, Digital Desk, Pierre Werner, also Dangling, Dangling String. That is an artwork by Natalie Jemichenko as a visiting artist in uh, Xerox Park, which hosted by Mark Weiser. And Marble Answering Machine, Drill Bishop from RCA, and uh, also Grasper UI, Dr. George Fitzmaurice, University of Toronto. I work with him uh, because I was a visiting professor in U of T with Bill Baxter and the Marine Bantai. So those work really helps me. So tangible is simply physical embodiment of digital information and the computations. And uh, to distinguish with the mainstream and the graphical user interface, it's very important to condense the description. <coughs> GUI, fundamentally tangible, and also general, uh, generic input. And the tangible user interface represents information in a physical way. So it also become a controller. You can grab and manipulate. This is very important. If I graphically represent uh, like this, so now you can see that, uh, uh, oops, you can see here that the representation is tangible, which also, oh, OK, it doesn't work. Anyway, so representations. It's tangible, so that you, it can also be touched, grabbed by users. So it's a rather boundary between representation and the code of the key. Pixel, you cannot directly touch. You have to use the remote controls. That's a fundamental uh, difference. Uh, this is one picture which summarizes my battle against Pixel Empire in the past uh, 25 years. So in the leftmost, you can see that uh, uh, you can see the iceberg under the waters. So this means. Iceberg, iceberg is, iceberg is, okay. Uh, on the bottom of the pool, you can see it, but you can't reach the hands, it's far away. So I try to push the ice above the waters so people can touch the tip of the iceberg. That's a physical uh, grass paper handles. However, this tip of the iceberg is still frozen, like uh, this wood or metals. So I decided to change these physical materials, also dynamically change computationally. That is radical alternance. So I'd like to talk all these crazy ideas uh, in a lot of the applications uh, in these lectures. So this is an early Tangibits project, like a MetaDesk and ambient rooms. So main key ideas, how to really uh, bridge the two worlds of the foreground and also the background. So center and the periphery, because I'm now giving a lecture. So I think giving a lecture is most important foreground work. But also I have a attention of the peripheral awareness 
if all of a sudden I see the wind is blowing, rains are uh, falling, so I, at least I can feel what is going outside. So how to use peripheral awareness in the human-computer interaction is one of the challenges I, I was very much interested in. So foreground task, you can use also grasp of media, like a tangible stuff, but also background, you can really get a lot of information from periphery. So let me show one example. So these are pin wheels spinning in the wind of the uh, digital information. In this case, solar wind. Solar wind is a ionized particle flying from the sun to the earth, which can be sensed. But uh, I spin the pin wheels to represent wind, solar wind, as a, uh, in the architectural space. So you can still keep talking, doing email, but you feel wind is blowing like a sun from outside tell us about the uh, status of the kind of storm. So also we did a lot of the projects uh, called the music motors. By the way, can anybody bring a water? I'm, water, if anybody can bring water, I appreciate it. So let me show the uh, music motors. So. So this is a project like a genie bottles or a perfume bottles. We try to extend the affordance language of the bottles, containers, releasing the perfume into the digital domain. So we put the music. Also we went to Glass Blowing Studio to make a perfect uh, bottles, also sound blasting. So you can see this is a kind of minimal design using the language of the bottles to control the digital contents, in this case, music. So this is a special project uh, uh, started by very personal reason. I had a dream to give a present to my mom and she lived in a Sapporo city, north part of Japan. Every morning she wakes up, she wants to check the weather forecast of that day, waiting on, uh, in front of a TV. But instead of a TV, I want her to open the blue bottles. So today's fine day, you see the birds uh, singing. So I try to really uh, use simple metaphor. She opens soy sauce bottles many, many times to cook for me. So once, you, once she opens, the smell coming out. So this is a warm, familiar metaphor of the real world. She never touched any computer or cell phone in her life. So I want her to not to learn new cryptic language, but to use she, her knowledge. But she passed away in 1998. So I designed this uh, music bottles as a tribute, tribute, then put the music. Uh, next year, my dear friend, Mark Weiser, also passed away. And uh, he's one of the important visions is common technology, how to make technology transparent, invisible, uh, woven into the everyday fabric, a uh, fabric of everyday life. So I made a paper that the bottles as a tribute to the Mark Weiser as a transparent interface. So we did a lot of projects, but also important things, what's the design principle behind that to make a, a say, scientific contribution? So all these projects have something in common is a, uh, coincidence of input and output space. There's no separation. Current computer, input and output, completely different. Uh, mouse, keyboard, touch screen, and the screen is different. But here, this in-touch is a three roller device which communicate remote, remote persons. Then if you touch, you can feel the force and the sense of touch. So, and another project is called uh, Caribot. Uh, this is a uh, physically embodied version of turtle graphics of a logo language that Seymour Papert invented. Now it's physical, you can teach how this robot dance, then move around. So you can do the differential geometries. Can anybody bring a water? I, I have a bit of issue. Okay. So this another project is a topo bar. This is a, a constructive assembly that uh, you can put all the modules together, but uh, each module have a kinetic memories. If you show how to move it, it's remember and repeat again and again, so that uh, you can make uh, robots 
based on the scheme of the constructive assembly. And uh, this is another new language to design the robots. So all common is uh, IO coincidence, which, oh, thank you very much. I did appreciate it. Thank you. So we did a lot of the project, uh, also changing uh, surface, tabletop surface, as a new interface between physical world and also digital world. So one of the pioneering work is Dr. John Dacoffer's work called App, which is for urban simulation. Let me show the video. Now you can see the building. It's a wire frame. Wire frame, the buildings is a physical, but also you can make it a uh, uh, shadow. This shadow is computational shadows not uh, uh, optical shadow. So you can clearly see that, uh, oops, you can see that the how is changed based on the uh, movement of the sun. So based on the day, you, you can see that the how is changes. And also you can simulate what happens if the surface is a glass, so the reflecting light, or how wind flow around the building may change, solving Navier-Stokes equation. In the important keys, people can grab this uh, building models very easily so that they can test it. So now here you can see the uh, wind simulation. How many people is mechanical engineer? How many, how many people believe, uh, solve Navier-Stokes equation? Free dynamics, good. Uh, we like uh, free dynamics, but uh, you can see that the boundary condition change every time you grab and move the building, then decompute. So this is very different from the animations or videos or slides because which allow you people to jump in, intervene, then test what would happen if this highway is more closer to the building, how traffic changes or how much uh, wind may uh, generated by the uh, ton, uh, urban tunnel like uh, capabilities. So these are uh, videos uh, we tested our system in the school of architecture and urban planning. How many people are architects? Urban planners, not so many. But how many people are designers? Oh, good. How many people are artists? Oh, not so many. Okay. Any good? Few. So I think uh, bringing those media which allow people to integrate tangible interactions and uh, simulations, also uh, seat of paper, is very powerful. Another aspect we learned is from physical scale model of the city is something uh, clear. But also you can apply those techniques to the computational models like a system dynamics or event driven simulation, which has a graph structure, basically node and also links. So putting a pack into node, then allowing people to control the like a traffics of the uh, <coughs> internet or bandwidth or number of the server or needs or demands, you can do a lot of interesting uh, simulation work. So we realize that uh, computational models of 2D structure can also enhance using these uh, tangible interactions. So we love the music. How many people play computer music or electric music? Okay. How many people go to the concert of the music? Computer music. Good. Computational music is very powerful, but uh, often from distance, you can tell. Are the musicians really playing, performing, or just hitting play buttons, or just doing an email? Because lack of the visibility of the uh, body, acoustic instrument, and the sound is missing. So we are very interested to make a causality chain more clear. So audio part, James Patton Benrick created. So now you can see that the blue, blue like a icon over there. So this uh, blue icon show the speaker, physical icon of the speaker. So location of the speaker icon and the distance with source of the music determine the uh, volumes. But also music, uh, each musical instrument has a variety of parameters which can be connected to the tangible interface which people can control. So movement of the body of the musician, also illustration of what's happening in, inside. Then also projection of this image onto the wall make interaction much more legible than notable computer. So how to communicate the legibilities of the causality chain is something uh, very important key factors. And uh, 
we are very lucky that uh, we presented the audio part in the NIME conference, where also team from um, Sergio Jorda from uh, Barcelona picked up this idea and brought the next level to React Table. How many people know React Table? Great, it was used by many uh, professional musicians, so we are very proud of uh, this uh, uh, contribution through their successful React Table. Also, I like uh, ping pong. How many people play ping pong? S seriously? Okay, that's so, uh, we, we play very seriously. So this is a ping pong. You can see the uh, water ripple and also the fish. Also, this is another mode. Every time you hit the ball, you create the comments. And another mode is to encourage people to continue rally, so develop the thunderstorm. So uh, ping pong is a bit kind of harsh game to get the point. You have to make opponent make a mistake. But uh, instead of uh, being a zero-sum game, how we can make everybody, even audience, enjoy? So this is uh, an interactive surface using a three microphone under each table. Then computing about uh, timing, different timing to make a triangulations. But the more important thing is how to design the experience for the player and also audience. So this is my, our first social media we uh, developed before Facebook. And also there are a lot of important lessons. Uh, Mark Weiser really uh, stressed technology should be invisible. But I argued against that uh, if everything is invisible, we are out of the business. So ball has to be visible. Also your partner and the table must be visible. But the puzzle should disappear. Puzzle is my part of the body. So I, I shouldn't really consider it's my body. So it's a disappear in the background. So I think a real key is we do a lot of the work these days, juggling 100 balls. How to really keep most important things in the foreground, but also other stuff in the background, but not forgetting, being aware. So this balance is something very important challenge of the next generation of HGI. We are also very excited about uh, actuating dynamic objects. Now you can see the, a bunch of the magnets which move the uh, object on, on the tables. In the middle, you can see that the uh, designer, this is a position of tower, of cellular phone tower. You can optimize the arrangement of the tower to cover enough areas. But uh, one team in uh, Lisbon is collaborating with another people in Boston. Then you can imagine that uh, two people now grabbing the same object. Can you see the same, same tower is grabbed? So they feel the force that your partner is moving to the other side. So that opens up interpersonal haptic communication channel. And another interesting example is a PICO done by Dr. James Patents. So this is uh, the same uh, cellular phone tower optimization problems. But uh, every time a uh, computer computes the best location, this pack moves autonomously. But the human can intervene, then stop, or slow, make it slower, or give the constant like this one. It's a bit of relationship between human beings. Uh, they love each other, so they don't, they don't want to, other partner go too far away, or a more complex relationship. Don't come too close, but don't come too far away. You know, the, so also if you need uh, acceleration, if you need to give a more computer resource to compute a certain area, you can use a dish, dish soap so to become a slippery, so, uh, so that you can give a highest amount of the CPU. So this is totally different paradigm of the computer science. In the computer science, you read the source code using Emacs, then edit, recompile, and execute. But this is a mechanical intervention while people are executing. You can do a lot of impro improvisational pro uh, programming. Uh, 2.5D is very interesting dimensions, and we did a lot of the uh, landscape design project. Uh, this is called Sandscape uh, installation in Arsectonica. Now you can see this vector. This vector shows the water drainage, how rain run down, then color shows the speed slash erosion. So people can understand the relationship of the form giving using your hands and analysis, more left side of the brain. So this is a <coughs> material which enables you form giving for aesthetic, artistic, plus computational analysis together. So one of the big problems is lack of the continuity between two different uh, worlds, physical and digital. It's obvious each has different strengths and weakness. But the real problem is we, can, we cannot enjoy both together simultaneously. Especially in the early stage of design, we appreciate physical uh, materials, like a sheet of the paper, style of form, or dancing, moving, or a clay. And, uh, Lava stream, 
large team, international precision, you definitely need the internet and the cattle system. But uh, you, once you move from left to right, it's very difficult to coming back to the uh, other side. So my dream is to invent new design medium, which multiple inherit from physical world and digital world. So soundscape is a small but very important step to show it's possible so that we do not need to give up the most important dexterity, feed of the uh, sense of touch, form giving, plus computational analysis. So we also continue to design a lot of the uh, tangible stuff, and uh, many people reject it, but uh, we continue to stuff. So this is one of the uh, very popular stuff called uh, IO brush. How, how many people saw IO brush before? Okay. So in the era of the Renaissance, all the painters were also color makers and the pigment makers. They collected uh, pigments, created pigments to express the ideas. So if you go to the supermarket, you see the beautiful color combination of the fruits. But the, those color, texture, inspire people. What kind of new artistic expression you can make out of those stuff? So we are interested about how to bring the practice of the Renaissance era in which people also made their own pigments. So now you can see that the teddy bear over there, this teddy bear sh show the source of the, thank you very much, uh, colors. But the more, more important thing is, uh, we went to the kindergartens, but the kids doesn't listen to Dr. Kimiko Ryokai. She was a PhD candidate. She's an inventor, also me. But she came up with her own interpretation using her creativity. So, so this is one of the best moments for other interaction designer because kids went beyond our limited imaginations. Then she created a new interpretation, which she's very proud of. So this is the photos I took in the Barcelona's uh, maybe 20 years ago, uh, but the interesting is all the market is presenting a palette challenging to the kids to create a new art piece, impression of the Barcelona uh, using uh, natural materials. So eye brush makes people see the world very differently. After your interaction, you don't see the world as you used to see it. You can't stop dreaming what kind of paintings, what kind of art you can create from beautiful uh, natures or scenery. So that's important, a bit like uh, wearing a new eyeglasses through which you see the world differently. We took a museum exhibition very seriously from the beginnings because we have to test our idea to uh, uh, meet more much wider audience. So this is an NTT ICC exhibition in the year 2000 in which we show, demonstrated the early stage of uh, uh, Tundra Bits. But also we went to, to the Arsitectonica in 2001, 2004. How many people went to the Arsitectonica? Good. That's a really great uh, like a mecca of the media arts and the interactive arts, but also at the intersection between uh, technology, arts, and also society. I, I highly recommend. This is uh, one of the best uh, venue for us, testing many high-level ideas, and also the use of technology for interactive uh, design. So these are first generation project we exhibited over there. But then we moved to the next level called radical atoms, because tangible is fine, but the fundamental limitations of physical materials are still frozen. They become asynchronous with digital states under the water. So today we have two different materials. One is frozen atoms and intangible pixels. And uh, frozen atoms like this wood, plastic, or uh, metal. In terms of pixels, exactly the pixel you are seeing is the photons. You can't directly manipulate. You can see it, but you can't control it using body without remote control. So, we, so my dream is to create a third materials, which dynamic, physical, and also computations, and that transform and change the property driven by the data and the computation, which sounds very abstract, but I'd like to show a lot of examples. Of course, also a lot of source of inspiration uh, from Prong's matters. Also, a lot of the dynamically reconfigured robotics really helped to us to shape this idea. And uh, some pioneer of shape display, like a Felix by Dr. Hiro Iwata. So, in the early stage of the radical atoms, something really exciting happened, means our uh 
the festival took rally items as umbrellas of overarching umbrellas, entire uh, festival, which has 20 or 30,000 people come. But the uh, best part is uh, Gelfried Stucker, he's a co director of the uh, He's a director of Arcelotinica, made a very nice title, The Alchemist of Our Time. So Alchemist of Our Time is, means, you know, alchemist who try to make a gold. So let's become alchemist to create the new materials. Using that materials, let's do the artistic expression. That's a very powerful uh, thinking. A bit like an uh, eye brush. You don't need to use the ink or brush given by your teacher or mom or dad, but you can create your own tools for the artistic expression. Then uh, this became a quite uh, important beginning of our three years exhibition uh, in uh, our scientific centers in which we demonstrated a bunch of stuff, uh, which including inform and the biologic, which I'd like to introduce uh, today. But the best part is I can bring a bunch of students, then debug, uh, install, but also get a lot of the great discussions. So that's something uh, very, very uh, variable experiences. So these are a list of the projects. So I highly encourage you that uh, you, as a computer scientist, you do the amazing work, publish a paper, but also exhibition, showing how your value, uh, research value in a comprehensive way to the rest of the us is something very important exercise, which I really value. So these are seen. So we are very lucky that uh, we found uh, ACMC guy as an academic home to publish, also make an inference, but also our Sectonica as another venue in which we uh, exhibit and uh, having a lot of deep discussions because a lot of the philosophers in Europe and also architects and the designers and uh, I really enjoy beyond HGI communities. So we continue the evolution of radical terms to many in interesting directions. Uh, then we wrote a first paper in the Intellectual Magazine to put the framework of this one. And uh, still very abstract, and also we don't know many things, how to really materials. But we did a speculative design, environment. This is not a real working prototype, but uh, we thought, do you guys know shape memory alloy? Shape memory alloy remembers shape, it's a string. If shape memory alloy exists, how about the shape memory clay? So we envision the clay which memorizes the canonical form, perfect sphere or perfect cube or whatever. Then if you deform, it snap the grip, uh, grip in a computer design, it snap. But also having a, some intelligence that you can multiply the, like one operation, uh, uh, grouping or repetition. So there are lots of the, uh, interesting possibility, but we do not know how to make this material smart enough, how to really teach those materials. But this is one of the uh, speculative design to start thinking about the future. Also, transdisciplinary approach is something so fundamentally important, especially art and science. So Dr. Xiao Xiao, she got a PhD in my group, did uh, this uh, project called uh, Mira Fug, uh, she's an accomplished pianist, also hardware computer science scientist and hacker. So one day she saw herself reflecting on piano. Then she came up with idea how can she live inside the piano, keep playing. So now you see the key moving automatically, like a player piano. So it gives a sense of the ghostly presence, somebody sitting in front of the piano. That that also allow to play with other people. Uh, this is my daughter, Alisa, but uh, she's now playing the role of the young Dr. Xiao Xiao. When Xiao Xiao is young, she plays this piano, but the other memory of her playing piano is inside the piano. But now, grown up uh, Xiao Xiao, who got a PhD, can play with young Xiao Xiao over, uh, over the time. So one of the dreams, if your grandma was a concert pianist, and uh, she passed away. But anniversary, you can invite her back from heaven to your piano, then let her play the piano uh, with her grandchildren. So we continue the development of the radical terms to convince people that the how this idea really work. So this is the evolution of the uh, 
shape-changing uh, stuff. And uh, Ken Nakayaki, he's a PhD candidate, developed series of the uh, robotics project uh, using a linear form, the line form, also chain form, integrating a lot of the modularity, sensing, and actuation. Now you can do a lot of uh, interesting stuff because line or 1D or tape has some kind of important uh, uh, versatilities which can be applied for many things using an uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, technical uh, challenge. So, shape display is something that uh, became a mainstream of radical tools. In the left side, you see time scale, and uh, rendering means usually display the shape on the computer screen using uh, graphics. But the rendering for us means making information visible, but also tangible. You can see that the, uh, you can see that the, this uh, shape display. You can directly touch, but also you can meet your gesture. So basically, we are inventing a new medium for representation of ideas, plus new interaction technique, like a midway gesture. So the invention of representation and interaction, a very important uh, couple of the, our research. Then to convince the potential of this uh, interaction, we, uh, Daniel Reitzinger and Sean Former did uh, this project called uh, Inform for Teleprints. How many people saw this video? Good. This became quite uh, viral thanks to the uh, internet. So being here, being this one, but also being Boston, something uh, our dream of human beings. Oh, they're traveling from US to Europe is not so easy. Uh, I lost my luggage, so it's got so much hassle. But finally, this morning, it's very bad. But also the fatigue, blah, blah. But now being here and there, you can, you can also influence physical materials over distance. Uh, using uh, uh, not only a body but any tools. So also intermaterial interaction is some important key that uh, you can you can manipulate. Also with the car, but the young car, we can do a lot of other stuff. So here you can see this data is still active. It's printing the dead end, but the other data is still computing. Everything is uh, active and live. And also you can see mathematical equation. So these are all the determined by the equation means you can tweak by but also if you sit on this couch made of this mathematical equation, it's deformed. Information is sensed, measured, so it can also incorporate into the uh, underlying mathematical equation. So this is a machine which took uh, two years to build. We also made a new version for the Exhibition in the Cooper Hill Design Museum in 2014-15, which also traveled to Alcatraz, 2016, then survived for three years. Then it's just returned. But uh, this also by played by so many kids. They really enjoy the uh, telepresence and other application. So I think a uh, museum exhibition, robust prototyping, something very important. Wow. Also, we played a lot. This is uh, one of the artist experiments. Uh, this is an homage to the MC Escher. Uh, you know MC Escher and the uh, infinite uh, structures, impossible made, relative movement. So don't ask me why. This is art. So combining these three engines of the inform, uh, we made a triptych, kinetic triptych called a transform to bring this machine to the Milan Design Week in 2014. There's a Milan Salone. It's a very big uh, furniture like a festival. Can I get the sound a bit more higher? So now you can see that uh, all the dynamic uh, dancing, so it can respond to human bodies or algorithms or data, anything. So this is a uh, radical atoms. So we did a lot of the uh, applications to communicate, also convince about the future. 
of dynamic materials. This is another homage to MC Escher. The red ball dancing is frozen atoms, all generation of the materials, like wood or plastic or glass, no digital consciousness. But white pin has digital guts, computational spirit inside, so you can fully uh, control. They are dancing, what well, looks like dancing, because mechanical, physical, but they're not communicating in a deep level at all. So this is uh, uh, also very interesting about the storytelling narrative. Uh, today, all the storytelling is done by amazing uh, people and computer animation, then Hollywood do the other movie digitally. But uh, we envision in future our physical environment, theme park, home, office, become a stage of storytelling. So this shows uh, all civilizations, the king, empire, who built the big uh, city and the castle, but uh, it didn't last so long, and uh, it starts sinking under the waters. Uh, so nature struck back. So you can tell a narrative, story, as we do on pixels using those materials. So I think a transdisciplinary is a very important engines. And uh, I'm very delighted to see here to come to Nova University because not only strong computer scientists, but also there are so many other disciplines, architecture, design. Also in Lisbon, there are many other schools, art school, also liberal arts. So finding opportunity in conflict between disciplines, breaking down old paradigm to create new archetypes is a very important principle. Uh, in this project, we try to make a collision between design technology, stillness, motion, also atoms and the bits. So, but the people ask the question, so what? Who care? I don't get it. Because maybe because it's too abstract, too conceptual or too artistic. So my students made this video to communicate possible story of the future in which those dynamic materials can change the experience of the people in a uh, uh, daily life. So this is a prescripted uh, uh, scenario. So it's not real, it's a fake, but it's it's very easy to make a real working version because context aware, computing is not so easy. Computer vision very powerful. Once you know the, uh, we don't do the uh, gamble at uh, MIT, but uh, you can technically, theoretically, you can move uh, things uh, around. So one of the keys, envisioning the future is very important, but to do fast prototype, but you don't need to fully implement everything because it costs too much of time and energy. So we also think about uh, materials has an important uh, feature like a flexibility, elasticity, also viscosity. But we can emulate all this material property using a transform or inform. Then you can really feel existing or non-existing materials based on this parameter. Then you can touch, hear the sound. Also, you can feel the vibration of this uh, materials through the ground, through the body. This explains something impossible by GUI. So that's a way to compete against the GUI empire. So I show the uh, shape display. Shape display has a lot of different uh, possibilities and capability, but you can see that how we've been pushing the envelope of shape display slash radical atoms to uh, develop new territory in this world. So also we have another stream called the Prongs Materials. It's more soft organic materials, which enable people to do more different kinds of interaction. So this shows a series of the project uh, done by my team that uh, knew it, using uh, uh, air, also jamming. The second one is jamming interface, then biologic, aeromorph, and the kinetics, and the CDR. So basically, these are all the materials. Sometimes, last one is like a, a fabric, knitting. You can knit all the actuator or sensor into the as a thread. Then you can make a quite interesting a new textile materials or skin, wrapping a body uh, or uh, any physical object. So among them, let me introduce Syria. Uh, Gifeo, this is Dr. Gifeo's PhD thesis, but uh, he invented a techno technology to print 50 micron thin hairs. So this thin hair has become obviously nice uh, mechanism, mechanical adhesion put things together. Also it can analyze the sound, so it can be sensor of how people touching to the materials. Also by 
vibrating the base, it can also actuate movement of the inert object on top of the uh, materials. So become actuator. You can see translation, rotation. And uh, so this is a capability. So this is a, one of the example how object move based on the uh, pattern of the uh, Syria, uh, Syria. Also, you can make uh, dancers uh, of uh, Swan's Lake dance because the bass has a Syria, so it's synchronized with the music. So this become interesting uh, new materials, uh, fur and the feather as a medium for design. So we've been working uh, for many design work, also, also professional designer. This is a garment that uh, Erin Pedersons and uh, Erin Robertson uh, designed using Syria in co collaboration with uh, Dr. Jifeo and my team. So this is a uh, new garment based on Syria. It's exhibited in a uh, Cooper Hewitt Design Museum in New York, also Cube Museum in the uh, Netherlands. So there are a lot of the interesting uh, materials in nature which shape change, hygromorphic materials based on the water, H2O, humidity make a change. So we focus on the uh, special bacteria, Bacillus subtilis natto, which also changing a shape based on the humidity. Let me show the videos of the uh, biologic. So now you can see that each flap has millions of the living bacteria. They are living and uh, sensing the relative humidities, also sweating based on the humidities. So this is a view from an atomic force microscope, which observing the shape changing of the uh, bacteria to write a paper for science advances to get the uh, exact data. But using this as a new engine, sensor actuator, by depositing the solution, including uh, exact amount of the bacteria to the target portion of the garment, uh, we try to make a second skin, which you can wear, but also breathe. So to design the functioning garment, we have to also know exactly her performance, uh, namely it's her heat map and also sweat map. Then simulating desirable flow of the air for ventilation, we determine how much flap should open. To do so, how much bacteria have to print it into the target uh, uh, areas of the textile. So one of the message, bio is a new interface. This biological materials become an interface between our bodies and natures, but that doesn't require the batteries or Arduinos or wire. So to communicate this vision, uh, we did an exhibition at MIT. So this is a steamboat st uh, emitting a steam to the fabric. Then so you see the biologic changing the shape in real time. So this is a material. This is a printer we created from scratch to deposit the liquid, which includes the exact amount of the uh, bacteria to the target areas. Then also human bodies is something very, very important uh, uh, target. But the blowing the steam to this mannequin is not so exciting as a demonstration. The most exciting thing with the human beings, professionals, experts, trained 
to dance, wear this uh, biological garment. Then they feel the change of the airflow while they are dancing. Then they change the way to dance because of airflow. And after the party, they told us that uh, they really feel, feel it like dancing with the bacteria. But you can't write any scientific paper. It's very artistic uh, uh, comments, which I like it. Uh, many people went to the uh, variety of places, but uh, top left, uh, Li Ni Yao is now a rising star in the CMU, Carnegie Mellon University, as a professor running, uh, running a, a morphing matter group. And uh, also, this got a lot of the awards. Uh, textile, wearable, fashion, and many other. So I'm very happy that uh, recognition and the impact. So one of my dreams is I want to let uh, radical atoms grow rather than build. Of course, we build as an engineer, electronics, computer, but also using a bi a biological mean is something important. Also, I want them to dance because dynamic. So let me show the one latest project to let uh, liquid dance. This is called uh, uh, program program programmable droplets, which led by Udaya Mapas in my group. So liquid is something uh, we dreamed to control. So using uh, uh, electrolytic technologies, now on this surface, you can control the uh, exact, precisely the movement so that you can match different stuff or shake. This has a lot of the pragmatic uh, implication for bio industry, pharmaceutical or chemical, because they have to develop each very special equipment to do very simple stuff about liquid. But uh, I came up with the idea that uh, how about the uh, bango hose pallet? Uh, if we can create the pallet to paint like a bango, if you see the beautiful scene, then this pallet automatically generates the color which fits to the uh, scenery you are seeing. So this is an artistic exploration. So we have a lot of dream. Another dream is levitate. I, want, I don't want to get stuck on the surface of the ground because of gravity. So this is a zero. These are new materials which you can put in the air. Then its float stays there. Second, computer exactly know where it is. Third, computer can also move it. So then it becomes medium for interaction between people, physical space, and the digital world. So this is a new clay, anti-gravity kind of clay, which we can play. And we apply to many applications like astronomical one. But the meta message important is defy gravity. Many people take constraint for granted, not asking why this constraint have to exist, why this I have to obey. I have to follow this stuff. Gravity is one of the examples. Of course, we have to accept the gravity if you are on the Earth. But if you're a designer of interstellar spaceship, it's totally different. So we should, we should question about every constant given, why that constant has to exist. If there's no reason, strong reason, what would happen if we defy gravity to cancel all these possibilities? So I think my team is doing two things. One is invent and inspire. Invention can be technical invention, scientific invention, or design invention, whatever. But also to communicate the value, meaning, story of invention is very important. That's part of the inspire. That's the reason we do put a lot of the energy for the uh, exhibition. So important motto is to be artistic and also analytic, and to be poetic and the pragmatic. It's very easy to choose one, a pragmatic, analytic, logical, or very subjective, artistic, aesthetic, but we have to be both. Each people have to have uh, those things uh, in their mind. That's something very important, because art and science is a very powerful uh, kind of boundary. And uh, each discipline, art, science, technology, design, has a different mission, different barrier. But you shouldn't choose one. You should choose all. You should really use spiral of this uh, like a circle. Then you have to keep developing your idea by circling these four different spheres, uh, crystallizing, and uh, by translating into four dimensions. So we do the idea which can be translatable in art, design, science, technology. And, uh, but also 3 d is something uh, I like it. So left side, 
image look at 2D, but uh, this is a painting of the uh, Bruegel's uh, Tower of the Barbers. But now, mapping, you can really see we speak all the language outside design school, but enjoying translating the fundamental core idea, the whole dimension. Then to go to the higher level, it's the axis. So today, I quickly uh, run through uh, seamless media design, tangibits, and the radical atoms. So we are still continue those uh, endeavors, but the important thing, important message uh, that uh, Alan K talked is the future is not to pre pre predict, but to invent. And uh, so this is something that uh, you create, something you're very passionate, but also inspire people. If many people, majority of people get excited, they may choose as a possible main stream of the next decades. So that's the way we continue the work. Then through this project, all its vision is something very important. And uh, of course, technology, we love, hate technology, but the technology gets obsolete in one year. Even if you have machine, you can still use it. You may trash, then go, go to landfill, even if it's usable. That's a reality. Needs also constantly changing, LP, CD, MP3. But fundamentally, the vision, like Mark Weiser's Ubitas computing, or Doug Engelbart collective intelligence, keep shining the light towards the future. So I think uh, Envision, and embody and inspire is very important three uh, steps. You have to dream up what kind of future you want to make it, but also you have to prototype, let people experience it. So embody, of course, we need to know technology, science, and also design. But to envision, also to inspire, I realize art has a very significant role to play. That's the reason uh, it's amazing that Lisbon has an amazing University, you can hope you can also take the classes from each other's uh, school, for example, so that uh, you should really broaden your boundaries to cover a lot of the stuff. So basically, we strive to push the boundary by envisioning the future, embodying original ideas, and inspiring people around the world through the scientific publication, design, and the art exhibition. So these are nine characters. How many people read the Chinese character in the audience? Nobody, oh. okay. So this is uh, nine character which summarize my guiding principle research. The first one, standard. Second, bridge the trail. Then bridge the mountain. This is 1D, 2D, 3D. Let, let me give a sh sm short comment. So the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Stick out far enough that no hammer can reach you. Standard among the crowd. Do you have any experience of hit the hammer on your on the head? Nobody? Even you don't remember. Okay. But uh, when you're young, it's very difficult. You have to read really D5. You have to read really standard. You have to believe yourself. Otherwise, it's very difficult to, to, to go to the next level. So once you become a bit senior, you have to really break the trail. There's no road laid out before me. Uh, I charge forward and load the image behind me. So neither spectator nor reference nor stopwatch exists here. This is important. There's no way to measure the impact of your invention because no stopwatch, no unit, like a time. If you make radical new stuff, you have a real challenge because no referee, no paper accepted, no funding come because so radical new. Uh, when I got the offer from MIT to join MIT, I thought it's like a finding the finding a path to climb up the mountain to the summit, which hidden by the crowd. But I learned it was completely wrong. I soon realized there was no existing mountain to climb. I had to create, build a new mountain from the ground zero, then become a fast uh, to reach the peak at fast. Uh, that's a way to survive in MIT. So I think a mountain building is something very, very uh, powerful uh, metaphors, and still I try to build and climb up another mountains. So I'd like to thank you for the invitation uh, by Nova University to come to uh, these cities. And, uh, but also I have a plan to go to different places uh, relatively soon. But all two years are in 2100. Sorry for that. But uh, Keith's key key future continues to exist. So people living in 2200, for which we have a responsibility as a designer or creator, researcher. So question I've been asking myself, my friends, 
students, what do you want to pass on to those living in 2200? How do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy be? So 2200 is a symbol of the future. We have to keep thinking. And uh, life has set end point. But the future never ends by the end of life or retirement. Also, but the future is never ending. So that's something important to keep in our minds. Also, we love and hate technology, but technology sooner or later become obsolete. Go to landfill, that's the reality. But the true vision is everlasting. So with 2200, I'd like to conclude my lecture. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. Great yeah. presentation. I hope you have enjoyed as much as I did. And now we have some time for questions. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Questions, please. <coughs> I can see much from here. <laughs> don't be shy. Don't be shy. Joanna, over there. We, we can't see the audience. Can we get the light yeah. for the audience? audience? Good afternoon, Professor. I'd like to thank you first for the lecture. I found Wh it very where are you? Um, over here. Oh, yeah. Can you, see the, can you get the light for the audience? Can you? Okay, good. Now I can see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I'd like to thank you first for the lecture. I found it very interesting. Um, What's your name? My name is Kavi. Nice to meet you. Likewise. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask you about uh, virtual reality and whether you think that it's um, a step in the right direction towards uh, improving human-machine interaction or whether it's a step backwards uh, further into the pixel empire, as you coined it. I think you already know the answer. Oh. Our approach <laughs> is completely opposite uh, from VR. And uh, I really believe gaze is very important, seeing each other's eyes. Also, none of the computer graphics which give a fake data can make, be, make believe it. Because as a human beings, I know, oh, it's a fake. And uh, shutting off the eyes and the ears, feeding uh, computer data, is interesting experiments. But the people never really believe it. People really see the subtle but fundamental gap. Oh, it's not real. Once it's, you people see it's not real, how you can trust it, all the digital media? So many people believe VR, also AR, also HMD, and the promoting, that's great. They can do their work. But I try to go to opposite. Rather than fooling your eyes or ears, I want to make real world become computational. But important comments, uh, one of my former students, Adam, gave is perfect VR or perfect AR, and the Perfect radical atoms are indistinguishable. Maybe in some sense, we are aiming at the new common goal, but a totally different approach, totally different uh, philosophy or ontology. So I admire all the amazing engineers pushing the envelope of the virtual reality or fake realities. But also I know it's very difficult to uh, convince real human to think that's real because it's not real. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next question. This is a very profound question. What's the realities? What's the virtualities? Hi, uh, how are you? Uh, thank you for the lecture. And my question <coughs> is about uh, the when do you think the technologies that you are building will become commonplace in the users' lives? Sorry, I couldn't catch. What's uh, the question? Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, f uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the, the lecture. Oh, my pleasure. And second of all, uh, the question is about when do you think that the technologies that you're inventing will become part of the daily lives of most people? I think we don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, imagine, like, uh, if it has computing or smartphone, internet dramatically change the world, 
But uh, 50 years ago, people never imagined people had a very different version of the dream, which failed. So we are here to create new future, which we believe and which we hope to happen. So I'm really serious about tangible. But it may take many, many years. Also, it costs so much because hardware, device, is so difficult in comparison to pixel or software. You can download it. So it's a big challenge. But in certain domain, like uh, sculpting or medicals, uh, there's certain like, uh, hope I see. So I don't know when, but the uh, most important thing, everybody should do their best effort to materialize, embody your dream, then communicate in a very clear way that the people can experience. Then if they choose your dream as the next reality, then door will be open. So hope, I encourage you guys to really uh, try to not be incremental, not to jump on the bandwagon of the big company, say VR is the future, or Windows is everything, or blah, 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 or GUI stuff. So I think uh, you, as academia, you should also be radicals. By doing so, you can contribute. Even not mainstream, you can stimulate people to think a different way. Next question. Uh, hi. Uh, I would like to know how do you approach design? Do you oh, can I have a name? Rui uh, Nabri. Okay. Rui. Uh, so, uh, do you try, try to uh, design using existing materials, or do you? Or someone proposed to you some radical new material, and, t and then you try to f find the interface for that material. Uh, uh, we do what, what is your approach? We do both. As you saw in my project, like uh, with the shape display, but the shape display also pioneered by other people, like uh, uh, Dr. Iwata, and uh, but we brought the next levels. Biologic is another example because nobody ever used living bacteria as a relative human sensors. So we invented. But also, it's so tiny. How to bring these uh, small materials to the human scale makes sense. Then we have to build a lot of the jump, like a design. So this, uh, we did it. So, but uh, our goal is to convince people to about the future called radical atoms. Physical materials is not necessary to be frozen, static. Using radicals, we can open the new like, uh, space of the design. To do so, we use all the means, existing materials, or inventing new materials. But always the goal is how to really inspire the community and the people. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Um, yeah. Thanks you for your oh, my for pleasure. talk. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Claudia, and I'm a designer. Great. I think I'm the only one here, I'm, I'm not sure, but anyway. Yes. Uh, I have a question to, 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 answer, to, to talk to you. Something that uh, um, I'm interested in understanding what motivates you more, uh, if it's uh, making history or if it's trying to always be an innovative people. Working with innovative people. Uh, sorry, I couldn't clearly catch the No? Okay. The question, question is... What uh, is most important for you? What is most important for you? To create history in this kind of field or to uh, work with uh, people that are always trying to innovate? Work with peop people? Working with people, surrounded with people, by people that are trying always to innovate in this field. Okay. I think what's most what, important... What motivates you more? Pardon? What motivates you more? Okay, that's another philosophical message. Uh, simply, I talk about uh, 2050. I'm dying. Seriously, I have only 20 years left, but I have a lot of dream. That drives me crazy. I have no second to waste. I came here because my friend, but the audience, you guys, because I want to inspire people, because I'm gone in 20 years, but some of you, young generation, may live much longer may do amazing stuff. So we are mortal. So mortality drives me. Also my dream, desire to do something meaningful, which I can do. And also, yeah. Did I answer to your question? No. 
Okay. But I'm glad that uh, I think a gender diversity is something very important. We often get a lot of the questions from middle-aged men, but also I'd like to hear uh, from uh, uh, women or whoever who have a different perspective. So please ask questions. This is a great opportunity. I'm here. I'm still alive. <laughs> oh, seriously, seriously, I'll be gone soon. So you have to hurry if you have any good questions. <laughs> questions, please? <coughs> If not, uh, I have a Facebook, uh, also Twitter account, and uh, you can, if you follow, like a Facebook, I upload all the videos or slides, but also you can comment, you can send direct message, becoming friends, if you're shy, but also I'm here for another few hours, so if you want to talk to me in person, uh, exchanging the card, or asking any question, or asking any advice, I'm more than happy to talk to students, because students are the future. You guys really shape the next uh, 50 years. So I want to talk as many as people, also hearing which part uh, you resonated. And uh, also important thing is my lecture does not have value unless something change happen in your mind. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, if you see the world a bit differently, if you get some motivation, there's a value of my lecture. But if you forget after uh, beer or wine, then it doesn't make any sense. So hope you digest many messages I put into the, my talk, but also you can review the videos of Glasgow Talk, also see the slides. And if you have any comments or question or something you felt, please don't be shy to send a message to my Twitter account. If you mention me, always it's uh, uh, coming to my timeline. So I'd like to keep uh, in touch with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I hope your work will keep inspiring us and yep. making us dream for a long, long time. Thank you. Thank you for coming.